24. Thermite reactions have been used for welding metal parts such as railway rares. <laughs> oh. Railway rails. Railway rails. Railway rails. Yeah, that's that's as good as you're going to get. Let's just keep going, shall we? <laughs> and in metal refining. One such thermite reaction is Fe2O3 solid plus 2 Al solid yields Al2O3 solid plus 2 Fe solid. Is this reaction spontaneous at room temperature under standard conditions? And then during the reaction, the surroundings absorb 851.8 kilojoules per mole of heat. Okay. So the question is basically asking, is this reaction spontaneous at room temperature? Now. We only, we only basically know two things, right? We have Fe2O3 solid with this balanced equation, and they told us that the surroundings absorb 851.8 kilojoules per mole of heat. Now, since we're talking about the second and third laws of thermodynamics, we're talking about entropy values, and entropy values are delta S values. Now, when you're talking about is a reaction being spontaneous or non-spontaneous at room temperature under standard conditions, we're dealing with a delta S that's very, very special. And that's this formula. It comes from this formula right here. Delta S of the whole entire universe equals the delta S of the systems plus the delta S of the surroundings. Now, let's just maybe put this down here for now. Because this is the ult, actually, I'll put this up here. This is the ultimate formula that we're going to use. Only the delta S of the whole entire universe will we be able to determine whether it's spontaneous or non spontaneous. A system delta S value will not tell us that, and a surrounding delta S value will not tell us that as well. So keep in mind that you have two different answers for a universe entropy, change in entropy for the whole entire universe. If you're spontaneous, if you're spontaneous, that means that the delta S for the whole entire universe has to be increasing. And that's basically what one of the laws of the thermodynamics is, is that, you know, the universe is constantly expanding and growing, and it's always becoming more spontaneous, more random. So that's a positive thing. We want a, you know, delta S to be a positive value. If it's non-spontaneous, non-spontaneous, then your delta S universe will be a negative. But there's two components. There's a system, what we're actually studying, and the surroundings. Now, they did give us a little hint. They said that the surroundings absorb, so that's important, 851.8 kilojoules per mole of heat. So. We know that this value has to come from the 851.8, 851.8 kilojoules per mole. But the question is, are these units a delta S value? No, no. Keep in mind that delta S values, standard delta S values, are in joules per mole times Kelvin. In this example, they give us kilojoules. So the first thing is I have to convert these kilojoules per mole into joules per mole times Kelvin. Well, how am I gonna do that? Well, we could do the first thing first, right? Kilojoules to joules. That's just multiplying by a thousand, right? Kilojoules to joules times by a thousand. I'm gonna take that 851.8 and times by a thousand, that will get me joules. And now we need to get that, that Kelvin in the bottom. Now, keep in mind, we're talking about standard temperature, right? Standard conditions, room temperature. If we looked on our charts for what the standard values are, which we will get into a, a little, in a little bit, the standard room temperature is 298.15 Kelvin. So that's the number that we have to include over here. Now, keep in mind that we want to add it in the denominator. 
So if it's in the denominator, I have to divide, denominator divide, right? We could do dimensional analysis, but I think I think we can kind of maybe get away with just looking and saying, oh, okay, this Kelvin is on the bottom, so I have to divide by 298.15. So I have to do two things here. So I'm gonna times by a thousand, that's how I get the joules on the top. The moles are already on the bottom, so we don't have to do anything with that, but if we need to add that Kelvin, I have to divide by 298. 0.15. So two things here that we got to do the A51.8. So let's go for it. Surroundings now is 851.8 times a thousand and then divide by 298.15. So I now have my delta S value being 2856.5. Nine five, we'll say nine five one, and that's now joules per mole times Kelvin. So now we have my delta S for the surroundings. So I'm going to just add this value to whatever the system is. Well, how am I going to find that out? Well, the system delta S is always from the balanced equation. The system is always what you're trying to you know, discover or, you know, observe. And in this case, the system is what's in that container. And what's in that container is the Fe203 solid plus the 2Al solid yields the Al2 O3 solid plus the 2Fe solid. I already see coefficients. And I see that I have a two in front of the AL, two in front of the FE. So this equation's balanced already, so I don't have to worry about that. But now how do I find out the system with no values? That's when we had to go in the back of the textbook. We had to go in the back of the textbook to find out what those standard state S values, the entropy values, for each one of these components. That's what I wrote over here. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag and drop um, just to put the numbers to who they're at. So 87.4 joules per mole times Kelvin is for Fe203. 28.3 is for aluminum. The 50.92 is for the Al203. And then the just the iron by itself is 27.3. And maybe I will just scooch this over a little bit just to say, okay, these were the delta S values. And now I'm just gonna blow this, this away. Okay, beautiful. Okay, let's just recenter this. That's good enough. Now, what is the formula? Oop, this is 20. I think what happened was this was actually, okay, I just wanna double check. I saw a little decimal there that I didn't get. Okay, cool. Okay, well now if these numbers are going to be solving for the delta S standard for the system, how are we going to crunch these numbers, right? Well, they're the formula. It's this formula right here. It's the delta S of the reaction, right, equals the sum, and maybe what I'll put, I'll put down over here is this means the sum. So maybe I'll just put it down here. So this is the sum which means addition, right? So I'm gonna add up all of the S values of my products and subtract them with the sum. Whoop. There we go, that makes it much better, right? I'm gonna subtract it with the sum of all of the reactants. So I have to sum up the reactants, I gotta sum up all the products, and then I just subtract the two of them. Now in here, I said delta S for the reaction, but just know that the reaction is always your system, right? So reaction system, in this case, tomato, tomato, right? They mean the same exact thing. So I can just say that the delta S for the entire system is just products minus reactants. Well, now let's just figure out what that sum is. We have to take into consideration our balanced equation. Keep in mind that you had only one Fe203 and one Al203 because these values are for one substance. 
But for example, since I have two aluminums, I have to times the 28.3 times two. So just for a habit, I will do it for each one of them. But you know, anything times by one is the same. So this one, technically we would multiply by one, but it would be the same number. And then for the 27.3 for the iron, you times it by two. Now to sum it up, literally there's plus signs here. So I have to sum up all the reactants and sum up all the products. Let's see what those sums are. So 87.4 plus two times 28.3, I get 144 all summed up for the reactant side and 50.92 plus 27.3, I get 78, whoop, that should be in red, 78.22 for my products. And now let's see what that system is. Delta S for the system equals products 78.22 minus the sum of the reactants, which was just 144. And if we put, you know, the decimal here, this should be 144 point, I guess, zero, right? Does it really matter? No. But for sig fig purposes, it will in a little bit. Let's find out what that system is. So delta S for the whole entire system equals 78.22 minus 144. I get negative 65.78. And these are in the units of your S values, joules per mole times Kelvin, because we took them from your standard values. So they already had their units. Okay, so I have my system value. That's what we just found out. We just found out that the system was negative 65.78 joules per mole times Kelvin. And the surroundings is 28.56.951. 2856.951 joules per mole times Kelvin. So if we want to find out that delta S value for the whole entire universe, we just add the systems plus the surroundings. So the system was negative 65.78, and we're going to add it to, and I'm going to just move this over because we're almost there. We're going to add it to the surroundings, 2,856.951. So our delta S for the whole entire universe is, let's see, 2856.951 minus 65, because it's a negative value, minus 65.78. I still get a positive number, 2,791. Two, if we do sig figs, I mean, we only had one sig fig after the decimal here. So technically, we should only have one after the decimal. So two. And that is joules per mole times Kelvin. So that's the actual value. But all they wanted to know was, is this spontaneous? Well. Spontaneous means that that delta S was a positive value. That's what we're looking for. And this is a positive, right? Positive 2,791. So is the reaction spontaneous? Yes, it is spontaneous because that delta S for the whole entire universe is a positive value, spontaneous. So I just want to point out that you cannot find a spontaneous value for delta S, for delta, a, delta S, just looking at your system, and you can't find a spontaneous value just looking at your surroundings. You need to add them together to see whether that whole entire universe is spontaneous or non-spontaneous. And that's it. There you go. Hopefully this helped. Thank you so much. Check out the channel, Physics Math Videos on the channel at the moment with more subjects to come. 
in a little bit. So go check the channel out. We'd love to help you out as much as we can. Thank you so much for the support. You guys have you know, been so awesome throughout this process. Let's keep going. If you wouldn't mind helping us out, please press the subscribe button. Thank you so much for that. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.